Hey everybody, this is going to be US Emily's Step 1 Buzzwords Part 5. If this is the first time that you're finding my channel, please subscribe. I make helpful videos about the path to becoming a doctor, everything from applying to medical school to, do, to doing well on your board exams and everything in between. So let's go ahead and get started with the buzzwords here. The first one is going to be soap bubble lesions. If you ever see this in a question, uh, they're usually talking about cryptococcus. Splinter hemorrhages, this is usually a sign of bacterial endocarditis. And as, a, as, as an aside real quick, I just want to say there are a lot of different uh, buzzwords and pictures that are associated with bacterial endocarditis. Splinter hemorrhages, Roth spots, Janeway lesions, Osler nodes, these are all different things. Definitely be able to identify them uh, by name and also in pictures. Uh, that's very high yield. So splinter hemorrhages in this case is associated with bacterial endocarditis. Splitting defense mechanism, this tripped me up a couple times for some reason, but patients that display this are at an increased risk for borderline personality disorder, so just know that. Subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, this is a uh, pretty dangerous sequela of measles. Subepithelial humps, this is going to be in reference to post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. This is very, very high yield. Please know all of the buzzwords associated with this. Be able to identify these things on light microscopy or electron microscopy for all of the glomerulopathies. This is very high yield. I can guarantee you're going to get a question on this at some point or another. Succinylcholine, really the only time that I've seen this mentioned is if they're trying to get at malignant hyperthermia. Remember, the treatment for malignant hyperthermia is dantrolene. Translocation between chromosome 2 and chromosome 5. This is going to be an association with anaplastic large cell lymphoma. I'm just going to stop right here and say that the next couple are a lot of different chromosome translocations. So please be sure to memorize these and, and get them down pat. I've seen questions that will just ask straight up. They'll give you the, the chromosome translocation and ask you to identify the disease. So if you've memorized it, it's a really easy question. You can get it right quick and keep moving on. But if you don't, then it's going to give you a lot of uh, a lot of trouble. So please memorize these. So chromosome 2 and 5 translocation is anaplastic large cell lymphoma. Translocation between chromosomes 8 and 14 is going to be Burkitt's lymphoma. Translocation between chromosomes 9 and 22, this is probably the most famous one, is in reference to chronic myelogenous leukemia. This is the Philadelphia chromosome that forms the BCR ABL fusion protein. A lot of high yield terms right there. But uh, translocation between chromosomes 9 and 22 is going to be CML. Translocation between chromosome 11 and 14, this is going to be mantle cell lymphoma. Uh, chromosome 11 and 18 translocation, this is going to be in reference to mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue lymphoma, or MOLT. Translocation between chromosomes 11 and 22, this is going to be a Ewing sarcoma. People like to remember this, that 11 plus 22 equals 33, and that's Patrick Ewing's old number. He was a famous basketball player. Whatever you got to do to memorize this. Translocation between chromosomes 14 and 18 is uh, in reference to follicular lymphoma. And another quick thing about these translocations, I do have a, a certain way that I used to memorize them based on like the letters uh, in the name. I would kind of match that up with the translocation of the chromosomes. If people want a video on that, just leave me a comment and let me know and I can make a, sep a separate video talking about how I memorized all these different translocations. The next one, translocation between chromosomes 15 and 17, this is going to be acute myelogenous leukemia. And now moving on, tartrate resistant acid phosphatase positive cells or trap positive cells. If you ever see that, we're talking about hairy cell leukemia. A teardrop cell or a dacrocyte, if you see either of those terms or if you see this on a peripheral blood smear, uh, it's talking about myelofibrosis. Remember, this is caused because there's so much fibrosis in the bone marrow that when cells are trying to squeeze out, they get pinched at the tip, and that kind of forms the teardrop cell or dacrocyte appearance. Terminal deoxynucleotidal transferase, TDT. If you see this, it's referencing acute lymphoblastic leukemia. So a lot of different cancers and lymphomas and, le and leukemias in this video that you have to keep straight. Thier Martin Auger. This isn't even really used anymore, but if you ever see it in a question, it's the growth medium for Neisseria gonorrhea. Phenar eminence atrophy, if you see this uh, mentioned or you see a picture of it, 
the that outer part of the thumb looks like it's atrophied and being wasting away, that's a sign of carpal tunnel syndrome, and that's when it gets pretty severe. Fubo mammillary nucleus, this is another part of the brain, and you need to identify what uh, neurotransmitter is produced there, and in this case, it's going to be histamine. Zank smear, again, this isn't a technique that's even used anymore, but if they ever mention it in a question, we're talking about HSV or VZV, herpes simplex or varicella zoster. An undulating fever, if you see this, a fever that kind of undulates like a wave, they're usually talking about a brucella infection, so be aware of that. U waves, if you see this mentioned in a question, or if you can read it on an EKG, it's talking about hypokalemia. Remember for hyperkalemia, there was peak T waves. For hypokalemia, we're going to have U waves. Ventral tegmental area, again, identify what neurotransmitter is produced here. In this case, it's two. It's going to be acetylcholine and dopamine. Worst headache of my life, pretty much every medical student knows this, or a thunderclap headache, they might call it is associated with a subarachnoid hemorrhage. And then finally, wrist drop is going to be associated with a radial nerve injury. So that's gonna be the end of part five. Uh, this is probably the last uh, buzzwords video that I'm gonna make for a while because I've, I've dropped maybe about 150 plus buzzwords so far. If it's really popular and you guys want more of these, leave me a comment and let me know and I can make more of them. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Please leave me some feedback about what I can do better and best of luck studying.